PSD with you. Tutorials on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Okay, to download GhostBSD, just simply go to the GhostBSD website, which is ghostbsd.org. Go to download. And depending on the version that you want, you can have the official release, which uses Mate, or the community release, which is using XFCE. And this is the one we want today. It's the XFCE community release. Click on direct download if you want to do that, or torrent if you prefer that way. And choose the mirror that is closest to yourself. And then that's it. Your download will start. Right, so you will be presented with a donation option. Now, I do donate to various projects, and and I'm just going to make a donation now. It's not going to be a, a life-changing amount, but I just want to show you that it's quite simple. Donate a couple of dollars, Canadian dollars, and you may not think that's going to add up, but if a few hundred people, if, if not a thousand people, donate, just this amount, it adds up to um, a nice chunk of change. And then that's it. I donated uh, two dollars to the Ghost PSD, and uh, put that in the pot, and it will help the project carry on. And thank you for your donation. You're welcome, and thank you for making such a great uh, operating system. Right. Once I've got the ISO and it's been downloaded, I need to write it to either a physical disk or a USB stick. In this case, I'm using a USB stick. So I'm just using DD to uh, copy it over. You can choose whichever way that you prefer, but for me, this is the easiest way. I'm just doing a quick reboot with the USB stick uh, in the slot. Just so we can get to the live desktop. Right, we're presented with the X configuration menu. I love this little menu. It's a fantastic way for you to choose the graphic setup that you want. And because I'm using a capture card and an external monitor to see what's going on, I need to go down to VESA. You choose the one option that suits you, either NVIDIA or um, VirtualBox. And here we are with the live desktop, the live session. Just need to go down and configure the Wi-Fi. Now, oh, it looks like you've got an Ethernet port there, but it's sometimes a bit slow to update the uh, the little symbol to the Wi-Fi one. But I'm just going to check that I'm connecting to the Wi-Fi that I want, which is a test Wi-Fi called Pac-Man. I don't tend to use Wi-Fi personally, but I use it for demonstration purposes. Right, we should be connected, although it still hasn't changed, but it will do. It will do. Okay, let's start the install. Welcome to GhostBSD. Now choose your language, which is default English. Uh, English UK is what we want for the keyboard. Um, there we go. Now leave that. And... Time zone. There's a time zone, London. And I'm going to choose UFS. There we go. And that for the disk. And leave them out. Yep. And I'm just going to choose uh, FreeBSD BIOS load because it's the only OS on here. And a simple root password. Super secure. Next, user setup. Our real name is going to be Robo Nuggy. Automatically fills in username, which is nice. Password. 
Super weak. Uh, change that to SH and start the install. Very nice. Really, it's quite simple. Installing GhostBSD is not a problem. All right, we'll just fast forward it to the end. It really is not that quick. And then we will restart and boot into the newly installed system. Just log in. Always useful. Okie dokie. And the Wi Fi symbol has just changed, which is pretty cool. Oh, uh, hmm. Do you know, I'm not keen on the, uh, the default theme for that menu. It's not very nice. So, but going right clicking on the desktop brings up this menu, which is a lot easier to read. Uh, let's, up, yeah, we're going to update. Because I know once we've updated, uh, it fixes a lot of problems. Although it gives you just one option for update there. The actual update process is downloading and uh, installing quite a few more that it didn't list. This takes a while. And another restart. And as you can see, the updates I've actually fixed the, the theming issue with uh, the XSE desktop. Oh, it looks like it's fixed it. It's all about a color at the bottom now. So that's pretty good. The menu is uh, still horrendous, so uh, we're going to try and sort that out in a bit. Just checking, uh, yeah, 4.14. So it's on the latest version. Right, one of the things I like to test uh, in a newly installed OS is how it handles items that you plug in. So the first one, um, I'm it can actually detect my network printer. With the Ghost PSD uh, Mate version, the main one, uh, it really was easy. But I seem to be having problems in this one in that it will not let me... I'm double-clicking, but it will not let me unlock the... Yeah, that's not going to connect us that. It won't let me unlock that, so I can't change the settings. No, that's just the server. No. Right, well, that's unusual. It won't let me gain root privileges to, um, to unlock it, so there you go. So in this instance, I can't set up the printer. Oh, well, um, what to do without a printer this time? Next, I'm going to try plugging in the scanner. And, yep, the scanner's been detected, which is a good sign. So we're going to go to, if I can find it, scan light. And scan light found it. So that, that's good. That's one plus then. And we should still have the test printout from the Mate version of um, GhostBSD that we did, the demonstration that I did there, which was printed out um, when I did the same test there. Yeah, there it is. So the scanner works. No printer, but the scanner works. Okay, that's fine. There'll probably be a way around to alter the, uh, the printer settings, but I think for someone just to try it out, that might be a little bit disconcerting that they can't access the settings. An interesting glitch which occurred in the main official version of GhostBSD was when, if I tried to create a new folder or a file, it didn't show up on the desktop. Well, it's good to say that that actually is not the case on this one. And then we're going to try a webcam which I've just plugged in, and it's PWC View. And the webcam works fine. So, yeah, great. So the only fly in the ointment really so far is the gaining root privileges to alter the printer. I'll just delete these two. 
Right, for those who are interested, the wallpaper selection is not much more than what you see on screen. The same nature inspired shots, really, of uh, the Mate version. Right clicking on the desktop brings up these options. You can open a new window, create launcher, URL link, create folder, document, open terminal, desktop settings, properties, and applications. And the applications is terminal emulator, file manager, mail reader, web browser, settings, and there's quite a few there. Accessories, you get the a lot of standard ones that come with XFCE. Uh, education is only one entry, that's maths. Graphics, uh, internet, multimedia. Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite. System utilities and about. We'll have a look at uh, LibreOffice Writer actually. Okay, and it's version 6.3.4.2.0 plus. Not too bad. Right. Uh, ooh, let's see if we can change. I want to try and change that menu's uh, theming because I find it, it really jarring compared to the right-clicking one. So we'll look at settings manager. Appearance, would it be? Yeah, I'm going to try and change this thing because I find it really hard to read that. Oh, great bird. If you could try and match it up to the right-clicking one, that would be really nice. Light one? That's not going to be a light one, I don't think. No. Dark. Okay. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Fantastic. Matches up well. I love that one. So now we have a nice... Yeah, that stands out a lot better, look at that. I'm not a fan of dark themes, but in this instance, I think it looks uh, nicer. I'm going to look at the release announcement. Okay, what's different between this version, 20.01, and the previous version of the XFCE Community Edition? Uh, I did go over them in the previous video with the Mate version, but uh, a couple of bug fixes. That's actually not bad if you if the, if you only need to fix two. That's not, that's not bad. Uh, instructions how to burn it to uh, well transfer it to USB. There's one I use at the top. Uh, if you're on Linux, you use this version, and if you're on Mac, you use this version. Uh, donate or become a patron if you can. Highly recommend you do. And that's it for that, I think. Just going to check out the best uh, YouTube channel. If you want to see, I don't know, I was I consider a more, a slightly more in-depth um, review of Ghost PSD. And I did one recently looking at the main Mate version. And apart from the, the Mate aspects, everything I said in that applies to this. So the the security aspect, the performance, etc., etc., will be exactly the same. Just you've got an XFCE desktop on top, that's all. So you can check that one out if you want a more in-depth review. But we'll have a quick look at top for those who might be interested. We're running at 520 megabytes at the moment. But that's because I've got Firefox active. Look what happens when I get rid of Firefox. And it falls right back down to 141. So I don't know what the default uh, freshly booted up amount would be, but it wouldn't really be much more than that. Or really much less than that, actually. I find it really difficult in reviewing uh, the community version or the XFCE version of GhostBSD because it's not the main branch. It's not the main version. And it's... A labour of love, really, by the community, the community edition. It's not as polished as the main version. I mean, it's not really rough by any standards, but it's not as polished. There are one or two um, things that come out. One of them is, you know, if, if the aesthetics really um, bother you, you know, the way that it's themed out of the box, then 
it's not it's not going to impress you the way that it looks when you soon uh, after you just installed. You know, you apply the updates, reboot, and you know it looks a lot better. Apply a darker theme uh, as we did, view mix I think, as well as that, and your menus match up. You know, your right click menu and your your main menu at the left bottom left hand corner. There's there's two little things there. I mean. They're not major things by any any stretch of the imagination, but it's just if, if your first impressions are, then it looks a little bit rougher. The main sticking point I found with this particular release was I couldn't access the printer settings. I couldn't get into root to let me change it. Now, there are probably ways around it. I could do it manually via the uh, command line, but if you're a new user and you like XSCE, you know, you're coming over from the Linux world, you know, it might be a showstopper if you can't access... Uh, so it's simple as printer settings. But apart from that, everything else is great. Everything looks good. I've not tested this out on um, a laptop, but the Wi-Fi is, is is fine. It does change eventually, you know, the little symbol in case you're wondering. But yeah, it's great. So would I recommend this version of GhostBSD? Yes, I would. If you're a fan of GhostBSD on FreeBSD, and you're a fan of XFCE, then it only makes sense to go and grab this one. It uses the latest version well, XFCE, for all the goodliness of GhostBSD. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.